Beginning of delimitation is path to peace between Azerbaijan and Armenia, political scientist. The return of sections between four villages in the northeastern Tavush province of Armenia and four deserted villages that were formerly a part of the northwestern Gazakh district of Azerbaijan and the beginning of the border delimitation process paves the way for the further progress of the peace process between Baku and Yerevan, political scientist Ariel Kogan said in an article published by the Bigin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies. The author emphasized that the negotiations were direct without mediators who failed for over three decades to get any results. The OSCE Minsk Group, for example, which was headed by a co-chairmanship consisting of France, Russia and the United States, came out empty-handed due to the geopolitical confrontation between Russia and the West. Both sides blamed each other for the failure, when in reality Russia and France were fighting to gain control of Armenia. The French saw Armenia as an asset in its regional confrontation with Turkey while considering Azerbaijan as their opponent's offshoot. Technically, by agreeing to return to the demarcation of the borders according to the Alma Ata declarations, the Armenian side validates the Azerbaijani thesis of the just war. Kogan also touched on the issue of the withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers from Karabakh and emphasized that the Azerbaijani victory and return of the Karabakh led to the withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers, ending Moscow's years-long military presence there. The US and the EU almost immediately, officially and demonstratively applauded the demarcation agreement. Russia and France were silent. For Paris, it is a loss, as its conflict with Baku is growing. Peaceful resolution of the conflict in the Southern Caucasus harms French standing in the region. Paris would benefit greatly from an escalation due to supplying Yerevan with its new weaponry. The agreement on demarcation can become a stepping stone towards the peace treaty, which will strengthen the Azerbaijani position stated in the article. Ukraine has lost almost half a million soldiers since the start of the war with Russia in February 2022, Russian Defense Ministry Sergei Shoigu has said. In total, the losses of the Ukrainian armed forces amounted to almost half a million military personnel since the beginning of the special military operation, Shoigu told a defense ministry meeting on Tuesday. The minister claimed that Western weapons failed to help Ukraine in its counteroffensive operation against Russia. Our servicemen have dispelled the myth about the superiority of Western weapons, the minister noted. He pledged to intensity the strikes against logistics centers and storage bases for Western weapons. In proportion to the threats posed by the United States and its allies, we will continue to improve the composition and structure of the armed forces and increase the production of the most popular weapons and military equipment, Shoigu said. Furthermore, Shoigu said that Russian troops will receive the first units of the S-500 anti-aircraft missile system. This new generation anti-aircraft system will be provided in two modifications, long-range anti-aircraft missile systems and missile defense systems, S-400, S-300 V-4, Buk M-3, Tor M-2U anti-aircraft missile systems, and new generation radar stations. Speaking about Russian Army's performance on the front line, Shoigu reiterated Russia's earlier claims that it captured the villages of Pervomaysk, Vodnivka, and Novomykhailivka in April. In addition, Shoigu claimed that NATO has deployed nearly 33,000 servicemen, about 300 tanks and more than 800 other types of armored vehicles near borders of Russia. The minister the fact that Washington was poised to supply Kiev with a new military aid package worth nearly $61 billion following a vote by the House of Representatives on Saturday. He noted that NATO is currently holding military exercises involving 90,000 servicemen and the exercises are mimicking supposed impending Russian aggression. Touching upon Sweden's accession to NATO, the Russian defense minister said the prospects of this country's membership to the alliance has increased tensions. Sweden's entry into the North Atlantic Alliance in early March has increased military and political tensions in the western and northwestern strategic directions, Shoigo said. NATO members have military personnel in Ukraine. Jens Stoltenberg. NATO member states have military advisors stationed at their embassies in Ukraine, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has told MSNBC News. In an interview on Sunday, Stoltenberg was asked whether the US-led bloc is planning to send additional personnel to help Kiev in its fight against Russia. 
There are no plans for any NATO combat presence in Ukraine, but of course, several NATO allies have men and women in uniform at the embassies giving advice, he said. The comments came after Pentagon spokesman Major General Pat Ryder told Politico that the U.S. is considering deploying more advisers to its embassy in Kiev. According to the outlet, the personnel could be tasked with handling logistics and helping with the maintenance of U.S.-supplied weapons systems. Although French President Emmanuel Macron and several other European leaders have refused to rule out placing NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine in the future, the bloc has so far maintained that it is not a direct participant in the conflict. Stoltenberg hailed the $61 billion aid package for Kiev passed by the U.S. House of Representatives on Saturday after months of stalling, but warned that the delay has had real consequences on the battlefield. The Ukrainians have now for months been outgunned. The much-needed aid, which includes money for weapons for Ukraine, was stuck in the house for months due to political wrangling. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has complained that dwindling American aid has caused ammunition shortages on the front line, also warning that Kiev could be defeated if the delays continue. U.S. President Joe Biden blamed the fall of the Donbass stronghold of Avdiivka to Russia in February on congressional inaction.